I'm going to be really straightforward. Stop bagging on Deontay Johnson. Stop it. The criticism is so straightforward and so narrow-minded that it just doesn't sound good anymore. And it's not justified. What's going on, everybody? I'm Noah Strackline. Thank you for jumping on to Steelers to go, your daily to go cup of Pittsburgh Steelers news and analysis. Find us on youtube.com slash all Steelers talk or anywhere you get your podcasts. And today we're talking about Deontay Johnson. I've waited all week to be able to sit down and actually talk about this. I wanted to read all the quotes and go back through my interviews and the whole nine and really get a feel for how I wanted to address this. And it was pretty straightforward the entire time. At no point did I feel as if I shouldn't address it this exact same way. Deontay Johnson does not need to have 1,200 yards and 15 touchdowns this season. And he's not the reason that he doesn't have 1,200 yards and 15 touchdowns this season. The criticism is so one-sided that it is completely ignoring Every factor that goes into why Deontay Johnson's season is not what people want it to be. Everyone and anyone is bagging on Deontay Johnson. I was on a podcast last night and I was asked very explicitly. What's wrong with Deontay Johnson? Why is it? Why is it bad? Why is he so disappointing? Why is he disappointing? What's disappointing about Deontay Johnson? That's my biggest question. And everyone's going to answer, well, he's not catching the football. He's not having 100-yard games. He's this, he's that. George Pickens is better. Okay, let's break it down. Let's look at it all, okay? Kenny Pickett and George Pickens have a lot better chemistry, obviously. That goes for two reasons. One, they're both rookies. Both of them have played together much longer than anybody else that Kenny Pickett is throwing the football to. And two, the route tree that George Pickens runs allows him to be open longer or go up and make ridiculous catches. That is his route tree. That is his game plan. That is the Steelers' way of getting him the ball. Go make ridiculous catches or run longer routes to be open deeper. When you have a rookie quarterback who needs a little bit, to see when the field is open and to find a guy that is open, it tends to work, and it is working. Who would have thought? Now, when it comes to Deontay Johnson, it is not the same. And people say, oh, well, his production dipped because, you know, he was only good because of Ben. He was good with Ben, but think about why he was good. That hasn't changed. Deontay Johnson still leads the league in open percentage. He is the most open wide receiver in the NFL. The difference is, is that his routes are so quick and timely that you have to be in sync with the quarterback in order for the quarterback to find you. You cannot sit there or run longer routes and have more time to get open. Deontay Johnson statistically is open all the time. Can he pick it? is not finding him when he's open. That's the other part of this argument. Is the whole, well, Deontay hasn't scored a touchdown and he's not doing this and he only has 25 yards a game and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now let me ask this. Are you okay with Kenny Pickett's last performance against the Indianapolis Colts where he went 20 for 28 and threw for 174 yards and didn't throw a touchdown? Are you okay with that? It seems like most of Steelers Nation was very excited about that performance. That was it. That was the beginning of Kenny Pickett. He's here. He has arrived. Things are changing. If you're okay with that performance, why are you not okay with Deontay Johnson's? Why can Kenny Pickett not throw touchdown passes for three games in a row, two games in a row, but somehow Deontay Johnson is supposed to catch a touchdown pass. How is it that Kenny Pickett 
only throws for 174 yards, and there's five, six guys that touch the football. And Deontay Johnson is supposed to have 100 yards, 100 plus yards a game. It just doesn't add up. It's so one sided of an argument. The argument is Deontay Johnson should be incredible. But at the same time, we have to be very patient with Kenny Pickett. You do have to be very patient with Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett is a bad quarterback right now. Look at the realm of the NFL. Stop narrowing it down to just Kenny Pickett, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and what you've seen from your rookie quarterback so far. Look at the realm of the NFL and tell me that 20 for 28 for 174 yards is a good game. It's not. It's a very mediocre performance in the realm of the entire NFL. That means Kenny Pickett right now, at best, is a mediocre quarterback. Does that mean that's where he's going to stop? No. I think that Kenny Pickett is supposed to be really bad right now. I've pushed that narrative since the beginning. Kenny Pickett is a guy who should not be succeeding in his rookie season the way he was thrown into everything. The Steelers put him in at halftime of a Jets game, and then two quarters later, he had to go play the Bills in Buffalo. That is the worst way you could have started Kenny Pickett's career. No matter what happened, no matter how bad it got, you should have sent Mitch Trubisky to Buffalo. You didn't. You tossed a rookie into the fire and then expected him to actually play well. He wasn't going to, and he's still not. He's showing flashes. I said it two days ago that I think Kenny Pickett is on the verge of becoming a franchise quarterback. He's he's showing that progress. But it's progress. That's all it is right now. Baby steps. Go from a really bad quarterback to a mediocre quarterback amongst the NFL. And then the next step is a okay quarterback and then the next step is a good quarterback and then the next step is a franchise quarterback but right now he's on step two and step two when you look league-wide is still really bad so why is Kenny Pickett allowed to be mediocre and the expectations for the guy that he's supposed to throw the ball to are supposed to be extraordinary that doesn't make any sense You can't ask a guy to get open any more than Deontay Johnson is because he's open more than anybody in the NFL. So why is it his fault that he's not getting the football? And there are times, you know, running backwards on plays, that is not okay. Never will it be okay. I think that's a mental thing. Just like the Najee Harris stuff, I think that you have to look at, sometimes you have to look at it and say, I'm the cause of this. Because every time Deontay Johnson turns on a television, looks on Twitter, or Googles anything at all about the Pittsburgh Steelers, it will be a boatload of people telling him how bad he is and how bad they want him off the team. So in his head, he's got to be thinking, well, man, I got to find the end zone and I got to make big plays because nobody likes me right now. Can't be good mentally. And anybody who's sitting around going, oh, yeah, I'd be fine. And that's that's the job. That's the job. No, get out of here. It's not the job. The job is to play football. And just like you saw with Najee Harris, when somebody tells you, hey, man, ignore everybody who's hating on you. Ignore all the critics and just play football. You tend to play better. And nobody's told that to Deontay Johnson yet. And I think that they will tell that to Deontay Johnson. But I think right now you have to look at it like he is the leader of that room. He's got nobody to tell him otherwise. He's getting a boatload of hate all the time. And somehow he's supposed to just manage it and continue to play his game that isn't getting results because of his quarterback. And he's going to take the scapegoat. He's going to be the scapegoat the entire season. That's just, it just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. The good parts of Deontay Johnson this year are all showing. He still remains the most open wide receiver in football, and you can never stress that enough. A wide receiver's job is to be open, and he's more open than anybody. He's a leader. 
you look way back and, you know, the Steelers are lucky that Juju Smith-Schuster turned out to be who Juju Smith-Schuster was. And I think he taught Deontay Johnson. And I think now Deontay Johnson's going to teach George Pickens. And that's who you want to teach George Pickens. You want somebody who's not afraid to talk when everything's bad. You want somebody who, um, I've talked to Deontay Johnson and gone up to him after a scrum about nonsense and said, hey man, look at, you know, I didn't really want to do that. I, I know nobody else really wanted to do that. That's just what we have to do. And he was like, yeah, man, like I get it. That's your job. Like no hard feelings. That's maturity. That's a leader. You'd be really surprised how many people can't separate our job in the media to us just completely hating somebody, stirring the pot. Deontay is a true-blooded leader. He's huge for the development of George Pickens. He gets open all the time. And yeah, he's not having the best year. But his quarterback isn't having a good year at all. And maybe, maybe in the NFL, you need a quarterback to be good at wide receiver. Who would have thought?